thanking you for the blessing you bestow upon us. We ask your mercy on those persons who are homeless, those persons who don't have air conditioning and cooling during these tremendous days that we have of heat. We ask you to help those families who have absolutely nothing. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These and all the blessings we ask in our name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smigel? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. Thank you for joining us this evening. For your benefit, the procedure which we will follow tonight is the first thing we're going to do is take up the public hearings, the three of them. At the conclusion of the public hearings, we'll move directly to the consent agenda. There are five matters there. The, um, the council may vote on all of these matters in one vote. We're entitled to do that if, uh, if no one wants any matter to be uh, considered separately. And then we'll move to the regular agenda. There are 15 matters there. We'll vote on all these matters uh, in just the way they are numbered or on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the formal agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on our formal docket or on the printed agenda, uh, rather, you'll be given that opportunity. But you have to sign a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the rear, in the lobby behind the council chamber uh, before the meeting began, so I can have in front of me to uh, call your name. Uh, before we move uh, to uh, the uh, public hearings, uh, we have two ceremonial matters. But before we do that, could I ask you to stand one more time? I would like to ask for a moment of silence out of respect for the passing of Senator Von Miller, please. Thank you very much. She was a great lady, a great public servant. Um, we do have uh, a couple of presentations made to be made to the City Council. Uh, is Laura Solomon here? Laura, would you like to come forward for Girls on the Run? Is that the, you've got a presentation you'd like to make? Yes. Sure. Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Burford, City Council members, and City Manager Jones. Um, we're here on behalf of Girls on the Run Southampton Roads. I'm Laura Solomon, the Executive Director, and this is Amy Georges, our Program Director. And we're just here to express our gratitude for the City of Norfolk's support of our 5K event on May 19th. Uh, girls on the Run Southampton Roads is a volunteer nonprofit group with the mission to prepare girls for a lifetime of self-respect and healthy living. We facilitate a 12-week, two-hour per week a program for girls grades 3 through 5, and that combines running with the curriculum-based activities that encourage emotional, social, mental, and physical health in addition to character development with positive peer interaction. The objectives include increasing self-esteem, body image, healthy eating attitudes, and completing a 5K. So that was what our event was on May 19th. Um, at this event, 32% of our over 1,300 race registrants were from Norfolk, and 40% of our 540 girls that participated in the spring program lived in Norfolk. So Norfolk represents a huge contingency of our participants. The Virginia Center for Healthy Communities in 2005 reported that the social indicators from Hampton Roads is above the state rate for teenage pregnancies, high school dropout rates, STD cases, and obesity, and we're hoping that our program helps combat this locally. The event was an overwhelming success for everyone that came and was a catalyst for the growth of our program. We've seen a tremendous increase in interest over the summer, and we'll resume the program in the fall. We're very excited to partner with the city and its um, Healthy North Norfolk initiative in future years. And we believe that this is a mutually <coughs> beneficial relationship that will serve as a catalyst for healthy living and success for our girls and future female community leaders. Norfolk is a strategic growth area for us as it's geographically central to our territory of Southampton <coughs> Road, including north to Yorktown, and an area of great need for the program's outcomes. So thank you very much for your contributions for your support to our program and ongoing dedication to the health of our citizens. And we have a little something to, to give you. 
Well, Laura, thank you for coming down, and thank you for the presentation, and thank you for all the good work that you're doing. Thank you. Do you have something you're going to? It's a picture. Great. And this is. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for bringing it down. Thank you for the, the presentation. Maybe you could get a couple of these council. <laughs> the girl in the, in the picture is actually um, from Gitt Elementary School. Her name is Chloe Jones. Right. She participated in the race this spring. Oh, great. Okay, well, thanks very much. Thanks Would this for be Marcus's? Yeah. Is this your daughter? Huh? No. no. Didn't no. your daughter run or your okay. wife uh, ran? My wife. Yeah, she ran and beat me once again. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, routinely. All right, uh, Dan Pellegrino has a presentation from the United Way. Well, Mayor Frame, uh, Vice Mayor, City Manager, uh, on behalf of the Southampton Roads community, we want to thank you as, uh, on behalf of the community and United Way for a tremendous 2011-2012 campaign. Uh, the City of Norfolk employees are tremendously generous, and we wanted to thank you with a plaque here. And um, as we move into 2012, uh, we know we'll see even greater results, but we not only want to thank you for that, but we also want to thank you for stepping up and uh, really partnering with United Way to ensure a brighter future for all in Southampton Roads. And while I know we don't have much time, I want to bring Sarah Bishop, our Director of Education, up here to give an example to the group here about how you guys are really leaders in this community. Thank you, Mayor, City Council members, City Manager, and the staff of the City of Norfolk. United Way has joined with the City, Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing, and Norfolk Public Schools in a very vibrant partnership to replicate the Harlem Children's Zone in one of our neighborhoods, high need neighborhood with tremendous capacity in Young Terrace. We are working together, we are crossing barriers, we are taking down silos to do whatever it takes to make sure children at PB Young Elementary School and in Young Terrace are able to achieve and move on into college and career or military. We look forward to coming back, telling you what we've done, but I do thank City Manager Marcus Jones and his fabulous team of employees who have worked with us so hard so far to, to see what we can do in that neighborhood. It's the first of many neighborhoods. We're going to get some best practices underway, and we'll come back and tell you about it. Thank you, though. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Dan. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming down. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Uh, for all the good work you guys are doing as well over there. So if y'all would like to be excused, that would be fine. Okay. All right, we'll move then to uh, public hearing number one. Public hearing one, scheduled for this day, pursuant to action of council on, G on June 12, 2012, on the application of Nick's Diner <clears throat> to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 to change land use designation from medium density residential to commercial office district to amend the zoning ordinance from R12 medium density multiple family and BFRPO district to conditional C2 quarter commercial and for a special exception to operate an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 1006 East Ocean View Avenue. And by a 5 1 vote, Planning Commission recommends denial. All right, Crystal Strump, Stump, please. All right. Okay, you've listed, you're listed as a proponent. Would you tell us your full name, please, and your present home address? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor, uh, for letting me speak and City Council members. My name is Crystal. Stump. My address is 3088 Moonlight Road, Smithfield, Virginia. I was hired by Ms. Bryant, the applicant that submitted this application, um, as an ABC consultant. The name of my business is ABC Consulting. As a former ABC agent, um, I have experience in obtaining ABC licenses, so I started helping her with her application when I learned that she needed to also apply for a special exception application through the city. Uh, Ms. Bryant submitted this application on February 6th, and as you mentioned, Norfolk Planning staff um, did recommend approval. However, the Planning Commission majority did not. Um, Nick's Diner has been operating um, since June of last year by Ms. Bryant. Her day begins daily at the diner at 5 a.m. and closes up no later than 6 p.m. Uh, she prepares meals for the community and tourists of Ocean View and works hard to make her business a success. And I think in this day and age, you know, making it a year in this economy, that's very impressive, and I'm very proud of her for that. Nick's Diner desires to offer cocktails as part of their menu, and it seems very appropriate in a beach community to offer Bloody Marys and mimosas and wine and beer to their customers. It's not uncommon for diners to offer alcoholic beverages. A more common diner, as you might know, as you might know is Silver Diner. It's a chain in Virginia. They also serve alcohol. 
<clears throat> the supporting civic leagues um, are as follows. Northside, Pinewell, Bayview, and initially Cottage Line Civic League did support the special exception <clears throat> as long as there were no forms of entertainment and if the business operated with restricted hours. However, Cottage Line did withdraw their support when we requested approval for rezoning. The concerns addressed by Cottage Line um, that was brought to our attention was the fear of Nick's Diner becoming a bar. Um, I do have photographs, and I'm sure you've probably seen the location. It's not designed to be a bar. It never will be a bar, and it has not been a bar in the past year. <clears throat> the menu has never changed. I do have a copy of the menu if you'd like to see that. It is true that the requested hours of operation and hours of alcohol sales have changed from the initial application. Ms. Bryant indicated alcohol sales from 11 to 9 on her initial application so that, I, so that that would cover wedding receptions, birthday, pri uh, birthday parties, and other private events. Um, but after speaking with the city and the community, she willingly agrees to stop those alcohol sales at 6 p.m. The hours of operation in which the Norfolk Planning Commission voted on were 5 a.m. to 6 p.m., seven days a week, and the alcohol sales from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., seven days a week. Elizabeth has gone to great strides meeting with all the civic leagues and her community to make sure that she does have a profitable business, but also catering to her customers. And I think that it's obvious that the community does want alcoholic beverages to that alcoholic beverages to be served um, at this diner, and we do request your approval for this. Do you have any que questions? Oh, thanks. Thank you. Kirk. Thank you for Thank hearing you. me. Vic Kierkevic. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Manager. I'm Vic Kierkevic. My address is 1816 East Ocean View Avenue. I'm the president of Cottage Line Civic League. Our Civic League voted unanimous, unanimously, 35 to 0, to recommend denial of the rezoning application. The zoning for Nick's Diner is R12. It's been in the Norfolk plan as R12 for over 20 years. We don't want to see this go away. Everything on the south, north side of Ocean View Avenue is zoned residential. It's not zoned commercial. There are two new homes within 100 feet of this establishment that would be impacted by this rezoning. We're adamantly opposed to it. We already have one problem establishment next door. We do not need a second <coughs> one. I'm urging you to deny the request for rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Vic, can I ask a question? Sure. Yep. If there was a men something was mentioned about how the, the Civic League voted for it and then changed. Can right. you address that? Originally, the applicant came into the Civic League, um, I believe it was in December, and she had put in re very restricted hours, very limited. We, did, we asked her then if she needed a special exception or rezoning, and she said no at that point. She got, I believe, it was like a 15 to 18 vote to give her the ABC license at that point. And that's before we've had two shootings at the Beach Pub, which is right next door. I know that doesn't impact, impact that. So the, the real rub is it's the rezoning versus a special extension. Yes, it's the rezoning. We've had the Norfolk plan. It's been there for over 20 years. We've had studies. We've had um, the Land Institute, the Urban Land Institute out. They've all recommended it to be residential on the north side of Ocean View Avenue. The citizens want that. They don't want to rezone the property to commercial. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And, thank you. and thank you. I have a. And I, there's a few Civic League members that are here, and they came down to support the. Come stand. If, please. Would you please stand? Thanks. All right. Thank you for coming down. And just um, when we first discussed this, I had brought up a compromise kind of on this to put a sunset on the zoning of that, and I, I believe that you guys told me that we don't do that on zoning issues, that that was the 18 month on that. I just want to verify that and make sure, because one of the things that was, the, the citizens are concerned that this would stay commercial sure. um, when it was implied for it to be uh, uh, residential. And I didn't know if that sunset clause was really something that we couldn't do, or if we were just saying we just, policy is we haven't done that. No, under the zoning laws that y you can't zone uh, temporarily like that. Um, you, you could pass it and you'd have the option to, to change it, but you, you couldn't take away from the person the zoning that they'd vested in. They'd become grandfathered in it. Um, uh, a special exception is different, and that you can, subject to a time period. 
but uh, not not a zoning. Right. So if if the property ever did, if if this um, manager decided that, or owner decided to go away, then that property will remain commercial. It doesn't automatically revert back to residential. Right. And that's contrary to the plan. That's right. the future of Ocean View. The general plan. Right. General right. Plan. And that was presented last night at the task force. We discussed that, and uh, Frank's office did a great job showing the plans, and uh, it is residential. How long has hey. it been uh, operated commercially? 30 years. Yeah, yeah. long time. As a diner. It, it was a non It's It's been a, a non-conforming non use. use. Okay. I think just about any commercial property that's left down in Ocean View on that side if anything were to happen to it, it automatically reverts back to residential. And we right. had the hotel fire that just happened, and that's we, the appeals process. Now, would uh, this be, would this fall under the two-year, um, like when you have the grandfathering? If it were, if they closed and went out of business and it was vacant for two years, yes, then as Councilman Smigum says, it would have to be residential after that. So, if there's a two-year period mm -hmm. for this grandfathered use goes out of use, mm -hmm. it, it then can only be used for the current zoning, which is residential. Which is residential. Okay. All right, thanks very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Council. Ready for the vote. There are three ordinances to this item, Mr. President. <clears throat> the first is an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to change the land use designation for property located at 1006 East Ocean View Avenue from medium density residential to commercial office. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? <laughs> no. Mr. Protegiru? Well, if I could say anything. Sure. I think that if it was, if it did not involve the issue of rezoning with special exception, it would make it much simpler for us. But the fact that it doesn't fit within the plan is a significant problem, and therefore I would vote no. Mr. Riddick? No. Mr. Smeagol? I, I just want to um, mention the same thing, that I, it wasn't even an issue until it became a zoning issue. And when we went back and looked at the plans down there in, in the plan 2030, the rezoning um, issue became much bigger. And I think some of the other civic leagues that voted in favor of it initially, after discussing the issue with the presidents, they were not aware of the rezoning as well. Um, but I can't support it, so no. Dr. Wibley? No. Ms. Williams? No. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? No. The second is an ordinance to rezone property located at 1060 East Ocean View Avenue from R12 and BFRPO to conditional C2, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? No. Mr. Protegiru? No. Mr. Riddick? No. Mr. Smeagol? No. Dr. Wibley? No. Ms. Williams? No. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? No. And the last is an ordinance granting. Uh, since the since uh, 1A failed, then the uh, motion the ordinance with special exception can't be passed, so it needs to be voted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Withdraw that, Bernard. Yes. All right, public hearing two. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on June 26, 2012, to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Perone Johnson on property located at 1422 O'Keefe Street. Um, there are no members of the public signed up to address the council in this matter. And I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Perone Johnson of a certain parcel of property acquired by the city of Norfolk pursuant to section 58.1-3970.1 of the Code of Virginia 1950 as amended and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three. Public hearing three scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on June 26, 2012 on the application of the YMCA for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of a portion of West 29th Street between Omohundra Avenue and Granby Street. By 6-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval to close the street. Um, Mr. Oakley is here, signed up as the applicant to answer questions, if anyone has, as is Mr. Pitchford, Mervyn Pitchford. <coughs> I, I, I think we're okay. There's no opposition signed. Uh, how how, how this. time sensitive is this? Because I've gotten a couple of calls and... Um, it's very you know. sensitive. <laughs> Seriously. I'm just letting Mr. Pitchford's blood pressure go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let him do that to you. Don't do that. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Reedy. <laughs> Are you I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of West 29th Street between Grammy Street and Omahundra Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Ribley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The consent agenda. There are five items here. Would any member of the public of the council like to have either any either one of these uh, uh, items considered separately either? Any of them? Okay, call the roll. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a religious institution on property located at 2736 to 2746 Woodland Avenue. Planning Commission approves 6 0. This was passed by June 26. Um, Mr. Blevins is here to answer questions if we have any. I can call the roll plan. Dispense with the charter requirement <coughs> for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? So this has all been worked out. Remember, we passed this over right. and yeah. everything's fine? Mm -hmm. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. <coughs> Frame? Aye. Mr. Parker was here as well, by the way. Excuse me. All right, R2, please. An ordinance permitting Eastern Virginia Medical Center to encroach into the city of Norfolk rights of way of Fairfax Avenue, Olney Road, Children's Lane, Gresham Drive, and Wagner Road with multiple SVD directional signs. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R3. An ordinance permitting Karen B. Labonte to encroach into the right-of-way of Willoughby Bay Avenue, a paper street at 707 West Ocean View Avenue with an existing house, a garage, sidewalks, a concrete pad, and a pier. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance approving an agreement between the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation and the city relating to the Norview Avenue Military Highway Project and the Azalea Garden Road Military Highway Project and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $7,051 from funds heretofore appropriated in the Capital Improvement Project budget to cover the city's share of the costs related to the projects. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance accepting an equipment grant award of baseball kits valued at $2,349.29 from the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation through the Federal Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention to the Norfolk Police Department as part of the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation 2012 Equipment Materials Grant Program for the Police Department's Badges for Baseball Program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? <clears throat> I think I mentioned uh, earlier uh, my disenchantment is how baseball is being run in Norfolk. I certainly support that. We could have used a catch up <coughs> on Saturday. Uh, but yes, I vote aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R6. An ordinance granting a pedestrian commercial overlay district development certificate to permit renovation of the <coughs> building for use as a retail establishment at 3230 Tidewater Drive. By 5-2 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 233 Granby Street by 5-1 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dan Montague. Good evening, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. As far as nightlife in this city goes, why are we still in the 60s? Nobody comes to downtown Norfolk unless it is a city sponsored extravaganza like op sale. <clears throat> Other than that, it's a ghost town down here. After my wife died and I started going out again, the only places to go were in Virginia Beach. And that is where I often saw the late, great Peter Decker and his beautiful wife. And sometimes we both stayed out after one o'clock in the morning at these places. What I want to know is why is Norfolk why, why Norfolk has no light, nightlife and why doesn't everybody play by the same set of rules? They all 
pay the same tax rate. And so how come some people get to stay open until 2 o'clock in the morning, others got to close at 11 o'clock, and then we, uh, we don't know what's going on or where it's going to happen or anything else. Some people on the council, I've been down here enough times that every time somebody puts in for a uh, liquor permit, it's like they're asking somebody to hit a kid in the head, you know, and this is this is absolutely ludicrous. We are in the 21st century. This is 2012, 1912. Prohibition is long over with. The South has got to get over it. Okay, I was raised Southern Baptist, where there was no liquor in my mama's house. Okay, but the thing about it is, her brother was a bootlegger. All right. This is what I'm saying. All right. Now, we have got to get over this anti-liquor routine. People like me like to go out and have a nice time. I haven't been drunk since I was 19 years old. And the thing about it is, the kid that I raised does not drink or smoke because he never saw me do stupid things with it, okay? And so, therefore, I want the city to start inviting people to open places where they can eat and drink. The state liquor law is absolutely ludicrous because you got to serve as much food as you do booze. Vegas could not operate if that happened, okay? So why don't we get with the program and, and invite people to operate entertainment establishments, establishments in downtown Norfolk? Huh? Why does everybody got to go to Virginia Beach? Look at all the revenue that we are, are losing. Why? Baltimore. Now, see, we imitate Baltimore all the time. Now, the, all the ships are going up to Baltimore because they got a nightlife. We don't have any. Start thinking about that a little bit, okay? And and every time somebody comes down there for a booze permit, I mean, don't uh, don't act like the, that you all are, are Baptist ministers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. I'm the daughter of a Baptist okay. minister, Dan. Okay, but he was fine. I am a nephew of one, okay? Dis dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. R8 is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 9659 <clears throat> First View Street. By a 6 0 vote, planning commission recommends denial. All right, Sheriff Bob McCabe. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Mr. Jones. Uh, I'm not here as in my official capacity, but as a resident of Ocean View. I live at 9552 25th Bay Street. I've lived uh, in Little Creek Road, Ocean View area for most of my life. I don't want to say how many. Um, I started uh, on the Norfolk Police Department in 1981 as a young rookie, and I worked Ocean View, and it was kind of a fun place to work because we had go-go bars and we had bars. Uh, we had so many, like they have um, Starbucks now on every corner. Uh, I think the policies that the council put in place uh, to, to help clean up Ocean View have been very effective in the 80s and 90s. Uh, but one of the things that, that you know, and, and I was asked to speak uh, as, as a resident of Ocean View by, by several groups, is, you know, Ocean View has changed. Norfolk's changed. Um, a major part of that is how the military's changed. Uh, when I worked in the 80s in Ocean View, uh, we had shore patrol going up and down East Ocean View Avenue. We were just turning them over left and right. Uh, the military has a no-tolerance policy on drugs and on drinking and any criminal activity dealing with drinking. The arrest for military sailors and, and military personnel is, is almost not extinct now out in Ocean View. Um, and I think to have the same policy, uh, I've, first of all, I've never been to Mojo Bones, haven't, uh, don't know the owner. Uh, this is more along the lines of the unwritten policy that uh, Ward 5 um, needs the city council to kind of look out after them because they, don't, they can't look out after themselves. We've got a lot of new citizens out there. We have a new councilman out there. We have new civic league leaders out there. 
They all support this change, and it's, and it's really a matter of fairness. And that's what I've been hearing for the last year or two, and I think I've expressed that to, to several of you. Uh, I think that you have the tools in place. You have the Bar Task Force. You have the Ocean U Task Force. You have the special exception. And I would like to see, as a matter of fairness, instead of penalizing a small business, because to me the only thing fragile in Ocean View is our small businesses that are trying to make a go of it. I'd like to see them, instead of being penalized and right, out, right out of the box, is give them an opportunity. Now, whether you could put a sunset on it for 18 months and give them a shot, uh, I don't think you're going to see uh, the civic leagues, the city council uh, folks out there that are going to put up with a lot, of, a lot of stuff that happened before. I have no doubt, no doubt at all, that if the policy was changed, we would not slip back into the, into the days of the go-go bars and all that. I, I just... Yeah, I just think it's a, it's a different environment. It's a, it's, a, it's a different world in Ocean View. And that's all I wanted to come down and, and express those feelings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Chair. Don Rockwell. My name is Don Rockwell. I live at 1349 Buckingham Avenue in Larchmont, Norfolk resident for almost 20 years. Thank you for your time. I am the owner of Mojo Bones. I know that this uh, special exception application has caused a lot of talk. And I think talk is what really was needed out there. I think besides the personal interest, besides the who said, she said, and besides the 20 years past history, currently as we stand now, we've got six civic leagues. We have 600 residents. We have local sheriffs. We have business owners. We have council people that all support this item agenda. That's what it's really about. It's about the people that live in Ocean View making a decision for themselves and the council people getting behind those people in Ocean View and allowing them to have a change in their community. We do have the Special Entertainment Task Force. We do have the Bar Task Force. We have great employees in this city that really do keep an eye on what we're doing. We've gotten better at what we do as far as special exceptions within the last five years. I've owned restaurants in the city now for eight years. I've seen the special exception application process change every year. Every time we find something kind of wrong with it, we redo it again. When I first opened the restaurant in Ocean View, you were allowed to build a restaurant without applying for a special exception first. So you invest $220,000 into a building. Then you find out you can't stay open past 11. Then you come back to council later after one year and you say, hey, I've had a year of good behavior. And they say, go talk to the civic leagues. We say, no problem. Six civic leagues later, it took eight months. They all meet on the same Thursday on the last one of the month, every month. So eight months to go through that process, we come back and they say, Oh, well, not everybody's a Civic League person. We need to talk to the other constituents in the area. And we say, no problem. We place a 10-foot by 20-foot banner on First View Avenue that says, please go here and sign a petition. You can sign for or against. 600 signatures later, we're back again, and we're still talking about the special exception process. We've got it in the bag, guys. We know how to do it. We know how to look for those bad operators. We know how to get the bad operators out and we want them. And we know how to entice the good ones to come and stay. It's time to let the residents make a decision in Ocean View. It's time to let the community make the choice. And it's time for our council to get behind our community. There's a thousand people voting for this tonight. There's not just me and one. So thank you very much and I hope the decision goes that way. Let me ask you a question. Sure. You're, you're giving up your DJ. Yes, we're not. We're not a nightclub, nor do we plan to be. The truth of the matter is, when you close at 11 o'clock, as far as the special exception reads, there can be no use of the establishment after 11. Well, to do that, you have to have to ask everybody to leave at 10, because it takes people 30 minutes to get their check, get their coat, finish up their Coca-Cola or their beer, whatever they have, and leave. So we're really doing this to stay open until 12 o'clock. I'm going to tell you. You close at 11? Yeah. There can be no one in the building at 11, Monday through Thursday. You can buy beer later at Farm Fresh then you can buy a beer at Mojo Bones. You can buy food at McDonald's later than you can buy it at Mojo Bones. I thought they were still open. I thought they were open. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other questions that I have while I'm here? So we're really just trying to be a little bit competitive with the people in the area. So um, Monday through Thursday. When you come in and have ribs on Monday night, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday at 1030, I'm going to ask you to leave. because you have to be out of the building by 11. And if anyone's in there and Karen Barnes is out front, I'm getting a big ticket. <laughs> so I make sure that those, all those codes are adhered to. That's right. It's the same with Friday. A lot of the Civic League members and people are in there. It's 11.30 and they worked and you know, they went home and had some family time. They come out to hear a good blues band. They say, hey, we gotta leave. 
So we're trying to bring the business to Ocean View. We're trying to let the community residents spend their time there. And we're trying to make a decision for the whole. How is it that people have to be out of your establishment by 11 o'clock, but if I go to Olive Garden and they close at 10 o'clock or, or 11 o'clock, I don't have to hurry up and eat my food and be done and out of, I, I don't understand Because that's that. their policy to close at that time. That's not the city's policy for them to close at that time. So any person that is in the establishment after that time is a violation of the special exception, and the special exception can then be taken. That's actually Olive Garden's policy. Okay. But as the larger chain restaurants know, and as the younger people eat later and later, Smokey Bones and TGI Fridays and Applebee's, they all stay open later than I do. Right. We actually consented with council uh, to work with them and took the DJ away. We said we don't even want a DJ. It was just included in the application because it's part of the special entertainment package, I guess you could say, when you open. So we said we're going to ax him off. You can't have a nightclub without a DJ. So you're not a nightclub. Right. Thank you for your time. Are there any other questions I can answer? Are you still going to have live music if you were if this was extended? I understand that there's live music that's there, blues music. Yeah, we have blues, we have jazz, we have a little bit of country. No, that's not going to change. Um, that type of venue in the evening I think is very good. I think the dinner is good. We've brought a little late night entertainment, and we try to close up shop before uh, you know the moon sets too far into Ocean View. Um, on your original application, you had put 9 a.m., mm -hmm. um, and I. I discussed this with you last night that generally there's nobody in Norfolk that sells alcohol before 11. Right. And we had, I had just coincided when I filled the application out with Susan, I had put that the alcohol and ABC hours were the same opening hours, but they don't need to be. I don't need to serve beer at 9 o'clock in the morning. So, Berner, can you change that in the ordinance that we're voting on to say 11 a.m.? Yes. And, and also, I, I believe that part of um, voting on this tonight is that we've asked for an 18 month. Um, probation period as part of this, and I've I've asked for that to be written into the ordinance um, as part of this. The ordinance. We're voting on it. The uh, voting on that the clerk will uh, read for your consideration. We'll have the hours uh, for. Uh, let me see here. Um, Sunday through Thursday as uh, nine to one, and then uh, 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 Friday and Saturday. I, I mean eleven to one, and then. I'm going to make it. Let me show you right. Um, <laughs> they uh, want to be open. They they want to be open nine to eleven to twelve open for uh, alcohol, except alcohol for until Sunday through Thursday, which will be eleven to one a.m. Okay. And, and uh, the yeah, Sunday through Thursday is eleven to twelve. So it's Monday through Thursday, one hour right. increasing he's, by one hour. He's one hour. Not, he's not going till two a.m. Right. Right. Only one hour. One. Just, one, Just one hour. I'm still going to kick you out for ribs at 11.45 on Tuesday night. All right. I want to go home, too. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Something, Paul, before we vote. Um, obviously, everybody knows that, that, that I have a little problem with this, not because of the operator, Mojo. I, as far as I'm concerned, he's a great operator. This policy has been in effect a long time, and it's been very effective. Uh, I want to be sure everybody in Ward 5 understands that if we change the law, it's changed <coughs> for everybody. So if somebody comes on East Little Creek Road who's not a good operator, and I know we have the, the, the bar task force, and we've witnessed all over the city that that's a tough deal to shut down. Uh, I, I, I'm, I want to get, and I propose to Mr. Schmiegel after our meeting that we <coughs> together five people each and sit down representing people from Willoughby all the way down Ocean View Avenue, all the way down Little Creek Road, stakeholders, and come up with, let them understand what, the, what, what this means when we do this. And also, if they say, okay, let's do it, come up with a consistent time or consistent set of times so that, that we're not Every time somebody comes in here, they've got a good reason why they need to be open till two or whatever it is. Uh, you know, I, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to be open-minded about it. Uh, until we do that, you know, I, I can't vote for it tonight. I, I, I think we're moving toward it. I think, like Sheriff McCabe says, things have <coughs> changed. Uh, but I think I, I, I don't want to undo 12 years without my. And I know. The, the applicant's been around. I know Councilman Schmeagel's been around. I have not been privy to meeting with civic leaders. I've not been privy to letting them know what happens if 
and how this is not just a mojo bones, an emotional area down there at first view. It's all about Ward 5. It's all about Little Creek Road. It's all about around East Beach and East Ocean View and all the way down. So, you know, right. we wanted to put this off can give us time to do it in a fairly fast manner. That's fine. If not, you know, and I don't know how it's going to come out. I really don't. It, uh, but that's just my feeling. I want to make that known. Um, we've worked a long time to get where we are. And um, maybe I should have been involved more early and nobody asked me to get involved earlier. Um, and I'm happy to do it. It was a nonpartisan group of people that, 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 have, that are stakeholders in that community. Do, do you want to, is that a, do you want to try to continue the matter for a little while? That's up to the applicant, I think. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't, if he wants to go through, then I just want everybody to understand where I'm coming from. It's, it, it, this, is a, this is a whole area. It's not first view and it's not, you know, personalities and emotions and what have you. All that's involved here. And I think it's bigger than, than that. And it's not about you. Okay. Well, okay. Are there any? Are there anybody else? No, that was it. That okay. was that was just two people. Can I make a sure. statement? I do have a prepared sure. statement. Um, yesterday's Ocean View Task Force meeting was a great example of civic engagement in our city, and underscored the reasons why government should always invite and respect citizen input when making decisions that impact their community. It was a nice summer evening, and people could have chosen to stay home and watch from the sidelines but we had a packed room at the Pretlow Library of approximately 100 citizens who wanted their voices heard. I want to thank all the citizens who came out to hear the discussion on Ocean View's part of Plan North 2030 and the three issues impacting our community. It was a true demonstration of a vibrant civic life in our city. When I left last night's meeting, I had a clear understanding that the citizens who live in Ocean View know where they have been and they know where they want to go. They understand fairness, and recognize balance, which is why there was overwhelming support for Mojo Bones to be given the opportunity to compete with other establishments on a field more evenly leveled. That same understanding of fairness is why all five civic leagues in Ward 5's Ocean View area supported Mojo Bones' application. Rules and policies give structure and order, but they exist in a dynamic environment. Sometimes policies get old and are no longer needed. Sometimes policies can be interpreted or manipulated for various reasons. But in a dynamic democracy, policy should always be subject for review, especially when the citizens demand the review. Opponents to this request for Mojo Bones have failed to make a compelling argument that exceeds the voices of the many citizens who have asked me to speak for them. They may have been a, there may have been a time when this policy was needed, but I think it's clear that that time has passed. We are not an island in Ocean View, and I take offense when someone says that we are still in some fragile state. Ocean View residents are not naive. We understand our past. We have a clear view of our present, and I believe we have a shared vision for our future. Denton downtown have seen tremendous expansion in small res restaurants. Ocean View has remained stagnant. I believe and respect that there are a majority of citizens who live in Ocean View who want to move forward, and I urge my colleagues on council to grant their support and respect to that majority. New ordinances have, have been adopted that will not allow strip clubs to prosper in Ocean View again, and I am confident that the citizens will be good stewards of their community and prevent history from repeating itself. As a 33-year resident of Ocean View, I have watched and been part of an Ocean View transition and growth. Now I hear the community telling us that they are ready for a renaissance, and I think we should support them. Ultimately, the citizens will be and should be the ones to monitor their community and let us know if the special exception needs to be examined. And to Mojo Bones, if this passes, the citizens in Ocean View and Norfolk expect for you to not only run a successful business, but to be a model citizen in our community. We expect for you to have good staff that will monitor inappropriate behavior and to assist us with keeping negative elements out of our community. Most of us look forward to your creative contributions that will make Ocean View a healthy and vibrant community of choice where people want to live, work, and play. I understand that there are council members who want to hold on to the past or are uncomfortable with change, but I hope there are others that are willing to stand with me, the council member who represents the area, and stand with the citizens who are all, <coughs> who are and will continue to be the stewards of that community. And in 18 months, we will review how well we've all done. Okay, are we ready to vote? Okay. Did you? Oh. Um, um, I've not talked to council, former Councilman Don Williams, but he wrote us a letter 
uh, asking, and he uh, called the uh, clerk asking that this be, the letter be made a part of the record and that it be read into the record and or summarized, and it's from former Councilman Don Williams, who could not be here tonight because he's recovering from surgery. When he was on council, we were informed by the owner of Mojo Bones that the 11 o'clock limit for the ABC license was fine with him because he was opening a family barbecue restaurant. The need to extend the hours now implies that he has some other purpose in mind other than a family restaurant, and he says that any change in this policy would be a step backwards. We can't afford uh, to let this happen. Uh, many of us have worked together over the past many years to curtail bars and nightclubs from the Ocean View and Little Creek area and have been successful. Okay. All right. We're ready. Dispense with it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. I got a tough time denying this young man an hour. You know, I, I, I thought he was asked for 2 a.m. And, you know, it, I, I really have a tough time denying this guy an hour. You know. It, it, it gives me some heartburn if we're going to be open for business. I mean, I'm, I, I really thought that this, this was, you know, something totally different. You know, I, I cannot deny this guy one hour, you know, allow his, I just, just can't do it. And so uh, I guess to support, I say aye. Mr. Protegiro? Paul, may I say something? Sure. Uh, I find myself, we were here, I want to say it was the last meeting, and we were literally, as a council, encouraging somebody who had made an application uh, on Collie Avenue to stay open later. And uh, we were trying to tell him, go back and look at the uh, informal session, because the discussion was, we want you, we want you to stay open later. Uh, and I think that we need to consider that uh, to examine these issues on a case-by-case -case basis, the way we appear to be doing that uh, throughout the city. Uh, it's not an issue of personalities or friendships. It's that is, I cannot make a decision at this council if I'm to weigh uh, friendships or personalities. Uh, I, I shouldn't be here if that's the case. Uh, and therefore, I, I can't do that and will not consider that, and I have to set that aside. The issue of the one hour, uh, considering this on a case-by-case -case basis, which I think that uh, in the future we need to be looking at and examining uh, uh, these uh, requests uh, the way we would anywhere else in it, throughout the city. Uh, that's what the city is, the citizens at this point are asking for. Uh, that's what uh, the uh, election of two years ago has given us. Uh, and uh, continues to give us uh, with the contacts that we receive from citizens. Uh, therefore, I do believe in a policy change uh, for uh, uh, the area, and uh, therefore I would uh, vote in favor of uh, uh, this matter. So it's aye. Mr. Riddick? Uh, no. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Well, I agree with Andy. That's what I was going to say. That two weeks ago, we were standing on our head to allow somebody to be able to compete by having later hours in what I consider a fragile area of Norfolk. Um, Norfolk has a lot of fragile areas. I'm hoping at some point what we're looking at instead is enforcement of good behavior at all of our restaurants instead of trying to figure out which areas might need to have uh, a uh, sweeping uh, rules apply. So um, I, I vote aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? Look, this, this matter is already passed, uh, so, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote no, even though it's already succeeded. Um, uh, I was there, as you say, at the beginning, back in the mid-'80s. When I came on council, there was no Ocean View Task Force. I formed the first Ocean View Task Force. The general plan for Ocean View was... was uh, was a nightmare. It permitted all of these, all of these bars, all of these restaurants, all these go-go bars, at all of these hotels, all the seedy joints, all, all of the little Williamsburgs and the lodges, and the, and uh, people didn't know whether we wanted to be just sort of a, uh, a you know, sort of a honky-tonk resort, or if we wanted to be a place where people could raise their families, raise their children, you know, invest in properties, and and think that they would be maintained. And um, we had a massive resdown zoning of all of Ocean View, a, a, a changing of the general plan in 1987. The place was packed. Uh, the council was threatened uh, by, by all of the people who owned large pieces of property back then. 
We were, there were petitions back then. There were lawsuits. I mean, there was, I mean, you name it, all the, the stuff that we, the good that we tried to do. There was more bad than good when we first got started. Every time we've had to come in and consider one of these things, everybody made the case, oh, it's just me. It's just me, but year after year, vote after vote, we have been inconsistent in denying this, and what has happened is that we have turned this aircraft carrier, or we have turned this glacier at Ocean View around. Uh, I can understand the need to change policy, but I don't think you do it on a case-by-case -case basis. I think you sit down, like Mr. Wynn has said, and, and look at it in a comprehensive fashion and then decide you're gonna change this sort of policy. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Rockwell knew when he uh, applied for this license three years ago what the rules were. And um, he's been back here, I think this is the third time now. I understand it is just an hour, and I understand that uh, in 18 months, we may re we review it again. I hope I wish you the very best, Mr. Rockwell. I hope you hope you succeed, and, uh, and you know, maybe there's a good chance that you will. But at the same time, I uh, would hope that the council would just as uh, aggressively sit down and discuss a policy or a change of policy or what we need to do in this area. And I don't uh, until we have actually had that comprehensive policy. Um, I, you know, I just can't support. This and I won't support the next one either until we have that, until we have that vote. So again, I will vote no. Okay, R nine, no, R ten rather. R nine, Mr. President. R nine. Yes, sir. The applicant has requested that this right. matter be continued. Okay. Motion to continue. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R ten. An ordinance appropriating $975,000 from the U.S. Marshal Service Special Revenue Account if and when received and authorizing the expenditure thereof at the direction of the sheriff to pay for various employee benefits, equipment purchases, and maintenance costs related to programs designed to improve the efficiency of the jail. <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement <coughs> for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 11. An ordinance appropriating $162,427 if and when received from the sheriff and authorizing the expenditure thereof towards salaries and benefits for three sheriff <coughs> employees. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 12. An ordinance approving the acceptance of receipts from a special revenue project, the Sheriff's Community Corrections Program, appropriating $570,000 for fiscal year 2013, authorizing the expenditure thereof by the sheriff, authorizing the sheriff's continued employment of 11 persons for the program and providing funds for their salaries and benefits. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance appropriating $35,000 and authorizing the expenditure thereof by the sheriff if and when received from the Deputy Fund Service Special Revenue Account to pay for holding functions for his employees, extending condolences and congratulations to his employees, and similar incentive-related benefits for his employees. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? I don't know about this one. <laughs> Aye. Mark. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance approving a lease agreement between Monticello Avenue LLC as lessor and the city of Norfolk as lessee for the lease of property owned by Monticello Avenue LLC and located at 861 Monticello Avenue, Norfolk, Virginia, and authorizing the city manager to execute the lease agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Well, can I say something real quick? Sure. Yeah. I want to, uh, I'm going <coughs> to page out of the vice mayor's handbook. And I want to thank the administration because I think that where we were and where uh, you have gotten us with this and uh, my compliments to Daryl and to the manager uh, are really wonderful. You all really did a great job in making this happen. Um, this particular lease being the expansion for our uh, combined, all, I would say one of a kind court uh, that allows, uh, not the court itself per se, but allows the individuals and the counselors and the CSB and the probation officers to, to get their job done appropriately. And uh, just the administration has done a great job in pulling this together. And this really is cutting edge. And uh, 
really puts the city of Norfolk out there when it comes to dealing with veterans, veterans affairs. I know that, Paul, you've made that such right. a, a high priority, and this uh, does uh, take us one great step in what I see sometimes on a daily basis in a courthouse. So uh, this really is a great job, and uh, your admin your, the administration and the staff should be, uh, should be uh, congratulated. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Was it R15? A resolution and are, are we good to go on R15? Yes. yes. Okay. A resolution in support of Hampton Roads Partnership Service Sharing Pilot Project between the cities of Norfolk, Chesapeake, and Virginia Beach. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, you have an add-on? One additional item, Mr. President. It's a resolution appointing members to the Early Childhood Learning Advisory Board. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal part portion of tonight's agenda. We have.